is a paradise. And this is where I live. I live in Stewart in Martin County. It is a small town with access to the St. Lucie Estuary and the Indian River Lagoon. It is a high quality, walkable, man-made environment. And it's bordered by the highest quality, most spectacular natural environment. We live in a region that is connected, yet it is very different. Parts of our region's economy are booming, but there are also challenges, and different parts of the region face different challenges in the future. Miami Beach. My family and I live just three blocks from here. We lived here for the last eight years. I run the beach every morning. Um, we were married in a little church on Lincoln Road. We had a wedding procession that came down on the beach. So this is an enormous amenity and it's part of our lives. Miami Beach is effectively the levee for the city of Miami. It works the same as a levee in, say, New Orleans. This 10 mile long stretch of beach we built in 1981. And the total project cost for all the sand and for the dunes was $64 million. But every year, this beach hosts events like our Basel or the Food and Wine Festival. And the total economic activity every year is far more than that $64 million. So built beach is a part of the solution, and they're a big part of the plan. But it's going to take more. The sea's rising. By 2050, it'll be between 9 inches and 2 feet higher. When the ocean is higher than the island, the sea rises up through the storm drains and floods us. So we're going to need backflow preventers, larger pipes, replenished mangroves, and higher seawalls. This is a, a very important part of Southeast Florida life, and the residents and the people who come here are here to stay. Miami Beach is an island that we're going to reinforce. This is where I live, the Florida Keys. Millions of people visit us each year from all over the world, and we generate a huge amount of economic activity for the state. We're also among the most vulnerable areas when it comes to the effects of climate change and rising seas. Much of the Florida Keys is just a few feet above sea level. We're going to need help to adapt to these changes. It will take a regional effort, a regional commitment. This is the plan. Protecting the Florida Keys is a key part of 750. We're critical to the region, and there's nowhere else in the world quite like us. This is where I ride, in Coral Gables. As a region, we need to think about how we move around and give more people options for green, healthy communities. This is where I work, in downtown South Miami. All of Southeast Florida is seeing surges in congestion and time spent stuck in traffic. But just building overpasses and adding lanes won't ease the traffic. That just invites more cars to the road. So what's the answer? We need to focus on reducing unnecessary driving and make it convenient and more fun to walk, to bike, or take public transit in order to accommodate the three million new residents we'll be seeing in the next 50 years. With walkable, mixed-use communities connected by transit, Southeast Florida can reach its real potential. This is the plan, a carefully considered urban environment that attracts people 
and results in healthier, happier lives. Implementing a variety of transport types is not about taking away your car or making no car trips. This is about providing a range of transportation options for a range of activities. Perhaps you need to drive to work, but you'd rather walk to your corner store. Perhaps your child would like to safely bike to school. Maybe some of us would like to ride transit because we could do something more constructive during our commute time. Each of these alternatives reduces our time spent in the car, which reduces congestion. This is the plan. Transit-oriented development is where we're going to be focusing most of the new development in Broward. Transit development really will be focusing here at stations like Cypress Creek Tri-Rail Station where there's existing 58,000 daytime employees to add to potential residential and commercial to make this area truly a unique mixed-use destination. That's our plan. I've lived in Southeast Florida for about 15 years. I live about a mile from downtown. Southeast Florida's central cities are developing into 24-hour activity centers for vertical locations for people to live, work, discover a variety of recreation and cultural amenities. Elevated people movers, buses, trolleys, wider sidewalks, wider taxis, and bike rentals provide real alternatives to private autos. Technology entrepreneurs, foreign trade adjusters, international banks are located next to our deep water port and a growing number of five-star hotels. Neighbors just blocks away can access nearby schools and museums. These are the places where Southeast Florida's diversity stimulates the economy and innovation, which will bring greater prosperity to the region. This is the plan. This is where I work. I am Vice President at Rybovich, a leader in the international marine industry located in West Palm Beach. The impact of a joint vision for our future is critical to the prosperity of everyone in the region. We attract these large yachts and their crews to our facility for our services, but they must send into the local economy to purchase a vast variety of other goods and services. We direct them to our downtowns, local businesses, and cultural centers, but all their needs simply cannot be met at the local level. This is the plan. By seeking to satisfy their needs at the regional level and considering all the resources available throughout the South Florida region, we can begin to hope to satisfy the demands of all of our customers. As a Florida native, I've watched Florida become a leader in growth and development. Over the next several years, there will be even more change. Many of these changes will be coupled with new technologies. Technologies that will liberate us from having to go to locations for shopping, for work, for school, for doctors. These technologies will bring the services and functions to us through telecommuting, through the fiber optic broadband. This is the plan. A regional fiber optic broadband network is just one of the many applications that our cooperative regional efforts will achieve. This is Miami and this is where I live. This city has its own dynamic energy. It also has serious potential. People of all generations already want to visit Southeast Florida. It's warm, it's fun, it's distinct. But retaining and encouraging a highly skilled, diverse, and globally fluent workforce that stays in the region will be the key to tapping into the full potential of this community. This is the plan.
As one of the most rapidly expanding economies in the United States, we need to focus on education at all levels. Our early education not only forms the foundation for the future of our populace, but also attracts skilled workers looking to establish families. The same must follow for higher education. South Florida is lacking a Tier 1 public university, something that will prove to be essential in cultivating a workforce. We should work towards providing vocational and trade education to serve all segments of our population. This is the plan. Improving our education system will elevate our region and push us to reach our potential. and I have lived in the region for over 28 years. You know, really, it, Florida is water. When you look at the state from satellite imagery, you see ocean all around it. You see Lake Okeechobee in the middle of it. You see the estuaries and the lagoons along the coast. And you see the Everglades and the wetlands spread out across the region. It's our water supply. It's, it feeds our businesses, it feeds our economy. Our region is one of the most productive agricultural regions in the world. Southeast Florida receives an average of over four and a half feet of rainfall each year. That's enough to fill eight Lake Okeechobees. Of course, there's no such thing as average rainfall when dealing with Mother Nature. It's either too wet or too dry. One major part of the plan is water farming and payment for environmental services. Water conservation and keeping agriculture viable are centerpieces to the plan. I've made Miami my home most of my life. The Everglades is the place that I can go, my family can go to get away from the urban life and see the, the beauty that is South Florida. It can be quiet, it can be vibrant, it can be so alive and it just inspires you. The Everglades remains one of the most unique ecosystems in the United States and is one of just three wetland sites designated by the international community as a World Heritage Site. The economic value of the Everglades is also enormous, with estimates ranging from $46 to $123 billion. But perhaps the single biggest service to South Florida is as a source of water. The Everglades stores and cleans millions of gallons of water used by both the environment and the urban communities. Although America's Everglades have been degraded and reduced in size, we have an obligation to preserve this special place for future generations. The Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, adopted by the United States and Florida governments in 2000, is the most ambitious ecosystem restoration plan ever undertaken in the history of the world. And this is the plan along with other initiatives that will ensure we preserve the Everglades for the future of the region. For me, the most important aspect of the plan was the process. It was the process of having local governments, elected officials, the private sector, finally having a conversation about the future, to talk to each other and trust each other, and maybe to count on each other to solve some of these difficult issues that we will confront as the next three million people arrive in this region. Through the plan, we have the opportunity to define our future, creating a South Florida that continues to be unlike anything else.